Right, everyone, I'm at your Christmas market, a place called Hyde Bound. Right. Look at this terrific fellow. What's your name, sir, buddy? Stephen. Stephen. Now, I was really caught on what you do, because you make... Tell me again, It's this is all leather, isn't it? These are tankards, and you said... Jacks. And jacks. A jack is a medieval design. Yeah. And a tankard is a Tudor design. Fantastic. Why did they adapt that then? So what was, why, why did they make it a different shape, the Tudors, the, to the, the medieval? The drinking vessels on board the Mary Rose, that's Henry VIII's ship, yeah. wore this shape. Really? The wider base okay. than the original medieval jack. Therefore, it would be more stable on board ship. Oh, really? Well, so that basically, so it can balance on a ship? Yes. How clever. That's amazing. So the, the sort of stuff that you just take for granted, you wouldn't even imagine that they would adapt for that kind of thing as well. How long does it take you to uh, create one of these? Say, say for example, this one. The that's the tankard. I'm getting that's confused. A tankard. That's yes. a tankard. Yeah. And that's the jack. And that's jack. How long would it take you to make one of these? It's almost impossible to tell you how long it takes to make one because inevitably we have to make them in batches. Right, by cutting out all of the bodies at one time and all of the handles and all of the bases and eventually yeah. they all mold together into quite a few tankards all at the same time. Effectively. Amazing. But what, what made you, have you always been into creating things out of leather? No, actually. I'm, no? A, I'm a retired charter surveyor. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> but I've always used my hands doing all kinds of bits and pieces. I came across these uh, vessels being made by a man many years ago who regrettably has died since. Yeah. But when he did die, I thought, well, why not? It's an interesting uh, product. Yeah. And we developed it from that point on. Terrific. You know, it's funny, isn't it? You say you're a chartered surveyor. I just, I just can't imagine that. This seems to be like your passion, like what you were born to do. <laughs> I know we've all got different skills, but you know. I have become quite passionate about it because I, I just find the subject fascinating. Yeah. Uh, charters fair or not, I've always been interested in history. Right. And the, 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 the amount of history connected with these drinking vessels is quite tremendous. So it kills two birds with one stone. You've got your interest in history yeah. and you're creating something that people back in those eras, in the medieval period, in the Tudor period, would have made. And presumably, you'd have, you'd have had to have done research as well oh, yes. to find out how they created them. You mentioned earlier about, if I could just zoom inside this as well, there's a, there's a resin, isn't there, that you put in there, and you said something about how they used to make them before, the resin that they used to put inside these. We use a modern epoxy resin for obvious fi um, health reasons. Yeah. Uh, but what was used centuries ago was boiled birch tree sap. Boiled birch tree sap? Yes, and when you boil birch tree sap, it turns black. Okay. And, it, and it looks exactly like this. And yeah. It, and when it cools, it hardens in the same way as this uh, modern one. And that's basically, it just stops the water from seeping out, basically. That's, that's, right. that's what it is. Yeah, waterproofs the vessel. The last one is called a bombard. A what? A bombard? Bombard. A bombard. Because when, in medieval times, castles were being sieged, yeah. it would be better to go through the gate than over the wall. Right. So one poor man will be delegated to hold, literally, a handheld cannon under his arm, as I'm doing now. Right. And he would fire towards the gate to try and break it down. Okay. The cannon was exactly this shape. Right. The, these vessels, made in the same shape, have simply become known as bombards because that man was bombarding the castle. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Simple as that. It's called bombard because the, the man would bombard the castle with, with the weapon. With a hand held cannon. Yes. With a handheld cannon. Called the bomb. That's incredible. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Really amazing. Mate, I think you do an amazing job here. Really cool. So check this out guys. So it's called Hidebound Handcrafted Leather Luxuries. Hidebound.co.uk. Amazing Christmas present. Brilliant stuff. Very nice to meet you, mate. Nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. All the best. Cheers. Bye bye. to be one didn't there in the Christmas market a Viking drinking horn place
place stall. Hello, lovely. You're right. All right. Is this your stall? No, it's not my stall. It's not your stall. But I'm working for somebody. Have you got? But to work for this place, you have to have some sort of affinity with drinking Viking drinking horns. Yeah. Not necessarily. No. Just like them and sell them. Have you got one? Do you drink from it? Uh, I do have a little one at home, but I haven't drank out of it. My husband's drank out of it. Has he? Yeah. <laughs> is uh, it your husband who runs this, or is no, it? No, it's not. Tell me about these then. Um, I mean, are these is this kind of authentic? I mean, they're beautiful. Yeah, as far as I know, they're authentic. You know, I mean, people have been drinking out of these vessels for about two thousand years. So two thousand years. And what do they, can you show me a few then? What do they, what would they typically use and what animal tusks or horns would they That's use? A cow horn. That's a cow horn, yeah? Yeah, so they'll take out the cartilage. Okay. And then they'll, they'll, they'll buff it up and then, then they'll uh, vanish it so it's to drink out. That's the that's the modern way. They would the mo the modern way is that they buff it up. Yeah, I mean originally they would have just like buried it in the ground. Yeah. And let the cartilage rot out. Right. And then they take it out and then they probably dip it in bees running beeswax. Okay. Inside so it coat it. Okay. And put the bottom so it make it more hygienic. You're joking. So, so they'd bury it in the ground? Yeah. And what would that do? It would rot the cartilage out from the inside of the horn. It would rot the cartilage out yeah. and then they'd, then they'd use beeswax, you say beeswax yeah. or something like that, to stop it from leaking. Wow. So you've got a few here, you've got, um, what ones, what about this here? This, what one's this? Buffalo. So the black ones are buffalo. What other different types have you got then? Uh, just the long horn cattle. The long horn cattle. Ah, is that which ones are they then? These, these are all these ones. These are all long horn cattle. Well, they're absolutely stunning. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Cheers then.